Hey everyone, it's Nathan. Uh, I am recording in a different location uh, than I normally do. This is actually my bedroom. Uh, as many of you probably know already, I uh, broke my ankle and my fibula and dislocated my ankle. Um, so yeah, it's uh, going to be a long recovery and I can't go up the stairs, which is typically where my office is. But anyways, um, I made this video um, on should you pay off your mortgage or invest the difference uh, actually for a project that I'm working on uh, with Marco over at Whiteboard Finance. Uh, he and I and two other creators, uh, one who's a personal finance expert, kind of like a Dave Ramsey type, uh, his name's Jacob Wade, and the other one's name's Axel. He has uh, many uh, multifamily homes. He's a, a major real estate investor. Um, so the four of us have teamed up uh, to talk about um, you know stocks, real estate, personal finance, uh, pretty much any topic under the sun relating to finance. Uh, in a school called Whiteboard Finance University. Uh, it's going to be a community of people that are looking to uh, increase their knowledge, increase their education, and ultimately um, increase their future net worth uh, by sharing ideas with each other and also with experts in each of these different industries. Uh, so if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. Like I said, this video was actually made for uh, a question that someone had asked uh, on that uh, university. So uh, with that out of the way, hope you enjoy the video and I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in the next one, hopefully soon in my actual office without a broken leg. This video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. Hey everyone, we've had some really good discussion over in the main chat uh, with Molly about the benefits of paying off your home versus investing the difference. And there's been several good back and forth, but I wanted to make a quick video about this topic and just provide some of the reasons why um, me and my wife personally decided uh, that we would keep our mortgage and invest the difference. You may be, you know, different from us. I think, you know, Jacob mentioned that this is a really emotional decision, essentially. It's, for, you know, for some people, the idea of being debt free is extremely compelling and really gives them the ability to, you know, invest without fear and not worry about the stock market, you know, crashing or whatever, um, just really helps them emotionally. So if that's you, by all means, pay off your mortgage. But I wanted to provide a couple of reasons why we decided not to, just in case this helps anyone. And the first reason, and one that I think a lot of people don't really think about is that having a mortgage is actually a really good inflation hedge. And actually, it's it's honestly probably, I mean, outside of delaying Social Security until like the last possible uh, second, you know, having a mortgage and having a home is a huge inflation hedge that most people just don't have access to. So to illustrate, I'm going to use our home as an example. So this is our house, nice little front door and some windows and all of our kids upstairs sleeping and cleaning up their room and doing the right thing, making good choices. Uh, and anyways, let's say our home right now, I don't know, it's worth probably 350000 And a lot of times in these examples, I think using a extreme number is helpful to kind of get the point. So in this case, let's say inflation is 50%. Um, and this could be over a couple of, you know, several years, obviously, or just all at once, whatever. Let's say inflation is 50%. And generally speaking, a home is going to increase with uh, inflation at least because, you know, home is a hard asset. So if the Fed prints a bunch of money and dilutes uh, the currency, the real assets, the tangible assets, the real estate, uh, the stocks are still going to uh, increase in their value because they're still worth, you know, they're worth basically the same proportion uh, as they once were. And now that, you know, dollars are a lot more, you know, they're still worth the same proportion of those dollars. So they should, bottom line, keep up with inflation very well. So let's say this 50% increase in inflation increases uh, the value of our house. It would not increase it in a real uh, way, inflation adjusted way, uh, but it would increase it um, in kind of a nominal way. And actually, I'm going to say our house is worth 400000 
just because I like to have good mental, uh, I'm not good at mental math. <laughs> so anyways, all right, so up 50%, 600,000 would be the new value. And on the flip side of the equation, uh, we have about 158,000 or so remaining on our mortgage. The mortgage payment is $750, and that payment is fixed through the life of the mortgage. So we have a 30-year mortgage. Um, so over the next, you know, 24 years or so, we'll have to pay $750 a month. So our $750 per month payment, that is a fixed payment. And let's also say for easy figuring that our income is $7,500 per month. And generally speaking, income also increases uh, with inflation, sometimes more, sometimes not. But generally speaking, it should increase with the pace of inflation. So if inflation was 50%, all of a sudden my income should go up by 50%. So that would be $11,250 per month uh, if my income went up by 50%. So the key thing is, as a percentage of my overall income, the mortgage went from 10% to, in this example, it would be 5%. The party that would lose big time from this 50% inflation would be the bank because I'm only having to pay them back $750 per month, and that $750 is not worth nearly as much as it once was before all of this inflation. Plus, I also get a huge appreciation in the value of my home, plus all the money that you did not send to the bank, now you're gonna be able to invest that at even higher rates because interest rates are likely going to go up a lot, and you're going to be able to invest at a higher rate. And that brings me to the second reason, and that is simply the math. So in this case, just interest math. And this is fairly straightforward. We have about 24 years left on our mortgage. And I would typically invest that difference in stocks. So right now, if you look at a calculator from the beginning of stock market history, all the way to today, uh, stocks have generally produced a compound annual return of about 9.178%, and that is with dividends reinvested. So this is a financial calculator. Um, you can find this online. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to put your numbers in. Um, but I'll show you real quick how to use it using my particular scenario. Um, so we have about 24 years left on our mortgage. And uh, the interest that we pay on the mortgage is 2.75% per year. Um, the present value should be zero because you're going to be basically starting to calculate how much total uh, interest you're going to gather um, in making your additional payments. So let's say uh, we have an extra $1,000 per year that we're going to um, either use to pay down this mortgage or uh, we're going to use to invest. So let's say that would be $12,000 per year, $1,000 a month. And make sure this is negative because this is your, you're paying out. Uh, and then just hit calculate. So over the next 24 years, making additional $12,000 per year in payments and earning 2.75% uh, in interest, we would save $1,000. $112,419 in interest. And I do realize this is a little off because eventually, you know, you're going to be paying off the mortgage and this will not really be this large of savings, but just for illustration purposes, uh, we'll, we'll just leave it like this. Uh, the actual numbers will vary, but this gets the point across. Um, so let's say instead of investing or, you know, essentially we're investing at the rate of the mortgage. So instead of investing an extra thousand dollars a month to paying off this mortgage at 2.75%, we would invest that in the stock market, which uh, we just showed earned a historical average of about 9.1%. Uh, let's just round it down to nine calculate. And so there you have it. You can see instead of earning $112,000 in interest, we would earn $633,000 in interest. So in our case, the difference between paying off the mortgage at 2.75% and investing it would be a staggering $500,000 difference. Now, of course, this assumes that the stock market returns 9% and not, uh, you know, negative 9%, but historically stocks have never lost money over a 20 plus year period. So I'm very confident that, or me personally, I'm very confident that I will earn at least 
2.75% investing the money if you are not confident that you can earn at least as much uh, your mortgage rate, your percentage rate, um, then obviously the equation changes. Right now, for example, uh, mortgage rates are about seven and a fraction percent. So the difference between seven and a half percent or seven percent and nine percent is a lot smaller. So I think in that case, if our mortgage was seven percent, we probably would lean more towards paying it off. It's just that our interest is so low um, that it, it just makes more sense in my mind to invest the difference. The third point is taxes. And this is something that may not apply to everybody, but it applies in our particular situation. So not only do we have an extremely low 2.75% uh, mortgage, but the interest that we pay each year is actually tax deductible. So our effective interest rate is actually 2.75% multiplied by one minus whatever our tax rate is. So in our case, uh, let's say our tax rate is 25% uh, federal and state. So if we take 2.75 minus uh, one minus 0 0.25, 0 0.75, the effective interest we're paying after tax is about 2.06%. And this is extremely, <laughs> but way more compounded if uh, you are in one of two positions. If you are going to, instead of paying down your mortgage, if you're going to put that money into a 401k, which your employer matches at 50% or even 100%, your return is going to be 50 to 100%, which is many, many multiple times greater than uh, 2%. Plus, uh, one other thing you're going to get is tax-free growth. So let's say you put this into like a Roth IRA or maybe a Roth 401k, something like that, you're going to get tax-free growth. So the government's not going to tax all the profits along the way. And at the end, you know, maybe you put in, you know, $100,000 over the life, uh, you know, of, instead of putting in uh, your mortgage, paying that off, you put in $100,000 over time into a Roth. And let's say that does grow by 9% a year, which we you know, said it was about 500000 in earnings. So at the end of the rainbow here, you're going to have $600,000 in a Roth IRA, which is completely tax-free. So you can take out all 600000 and that is not going to be taxed on your income statement. So you're going to save, what, 25000 multiplied, or 25% multiplied by $500,000 in profits. So in that case, you would save 125 dollars thousand in taxes. So honestly, in this case, the actual tax savings alone, 125,000 were greater than the interest that I was going to save by paying off the mortgage early. And that's not even considering this reality uh, that the actual effective tax rate is, or, uh, interest rate is even lower. So these up here are the three uh, main reasons why we decided to keep our mortgage 2.75% uh, and just make the absolute minimum payments. Um, I cannot imagine a situation where we would decide to pay that off sooner. Maybe things change, but um, that's, just, that's just our situation. So, um, you know, your mileage may vary. Maybe your numbers are different. Maybe emotionally you just feel good about uh, you know, paying it off and, and being done with it. Those are all perfectly fine and legitimate reasons, um, but just some food for thought here.